Hey everyone, Shaper1000 here. Today we're going to uh, tin up the tip on this uh, Weller 60 watt, 6.4 millimeter tip. Um, got a new one because my old one doesn't doesn't work right. It, I think all it needs is a tip, but we couldn't find any tips, so. Monkey said, just, just get you a new one for now. So this is the cheapest one I could find. It was uh, $25. It's got the little tiny tips in there that I need for other things. I think I'm going to be using this tip today. It looks like it's already tinned up. So we may not have to do anything with that. Um, but we're going to try this out. Um, it's got what they call the halo lights around it here so this should help us work and what we're going to do sorry about that shadow there but I got a light up here that um, just um, it's behind the camera so sorry about that uh, well it's not behind it's, it's above the camera but the camera's kind of in the way of it I don't know if that'll help any so we're just going to solder a few wires here um, I got a new stereo for Monkey's truck. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right, let, let's just skip to the intro real quick. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. A uh, little under the weather today. I'm not sure what's going on. But not for the... Uh, not for the Toyota, but for the uh, the SUV, the Chevy Traverse. Um, we tried to put a stereo in it one other time, and it just, nothing was working right. Uh, this thing, you have to have this. This was working fine, but the in-dash mounting kit didn't work and all that, and I was like, I just sent everything back except for that pack there. Um, but, because that, that makes your chimes work. But I had a company reach out to me and wanted me to do a video on one of their products and it needed a USB port and ours don't have a USB port. So I said, well, that, you know, that's all right. And they said, well, how about this? How about we send you this? So they sent me a stereo. Uh, let me grab it real quick for you here. So they sent me this. It's an Android. So um, the only issue with this is I'm going to have to DIY the brackets to make it fit in there. And it's not going to go all the way in, of course, but it's going to come back up to here. So I ordered an in dash mounting kit. This also came with a couple brackets. It came with the camera. It it has GPS, it came with the GPS um, antenna. Now I'm not going to be showing the installation on that because it's just going to be a big bunch of me trying to figure out how to get this to set in there and look nice. Um, but they sent, you a couple, sent me a couple brackets with it. So I just going to have to figure out a way to get this to fit in there. Uh, I, sh I should be able to do something like that. I mean, if I can build a car, right, a whole car, I should be able to build something to put a stereo in that car. But anyway, so I said, sure, I'll try that out. So I'm going to be doing that tomorrow. It's got a backup camera. Um, and, uh, yeah, the backup camera came with it. So... buddy Dennis just got one of these not too long ago it wasn't one of these um, but he got a nice nice little soldering iron and while I'm opening this I'll put that clip in right now this is what it looks like it's a digital readout you got to put your heat up and down you got your power right there this is the tip. 
you know, excuse us, put your other, take this tip out, put a new one in. You get tips. I guess I'm back. I got this opened up while you was watching that clip. Um, just gonna solder up a few wires here. I've already got the strip back. I'm pretty much ready to go. I've got my heat shrink on there on each one of them. These ones I'm not gonna worry about right at the moment. So I'm gonna see what's going on with this thing. See if it's already tinned up or not. They give you a little bit of starting solder. I, you know, I don't even know what it is, <laughs> but I got the uh, rosin core here. Seems to work well with the flux. getting hot we'll see there we go. Uh, I need to get a sponge hang on okay I got me a damp sponge over there you don't want it wet you just want it damp I'm gonna go ahead and tin this up anyway looks like it's already tin it is Okay, so always do this in a well ventilated area. Okay, so alright, let's start with the white wires here. So I'm just gonna what I usually do, these are just just follow the colors. What I usually do, I'm gonna have to bring you in here a little bit is uh I just straighten the wires out and try to push them in together when uh you don't want to twist them yet just put them in there until until they go together. I know a lot of guys say you should twist them, do all this stuff, time in a knot, whatever, but <clears throat> if it's a wire it shouldn't have that much tug on it. You know what I mean? Especially if it's a stereo up underneath your dash, it shouldn't have anything tugging on it. So I just kind of just put them together, wrap them together, if you can it, it takes some time but or you can also wrap them up I might not have have it trimmed back enough let's trim it back just a little bit here I can do this without burning myself make it a little bit longer Try that. You can probably just these wires are so so small. These are just the speaker wires. Something like that. Now I'm gonna dip my solder into my I got the paste. I got the flux there. Now, very nice. There's that, that one, and that's that's pretty solid. That's not that's not going to pull apart. If if you got something that can pull that apart, guys. You got too much strain on that wire anyway. So let this cool down. And I think it's cool. Let's try to slide our there we go. Our heat shrink up over that. There we go. Now, a lot of guys will use this, but I don't like using that because sometimes you can melt through 
let me grab a uh, let me grab my lighter and a lot of guys like a wire this size they'll use they'll use a big you know this is they'll use something like that that size and that's just to me that's too big I try to get it to fit as snug as possible that's all you need now I'm gonna take this I think I've showed this before Just heat it up. It doesn't take much. Heat gun's the best. But I don't know where my heat gun is. And that wire's done. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to speed you up. And I'm going to do the rest of these. While you guys listen to some music. How's that sound? So, let me... Alright. Can you guys see that alright? Problem is, the more I zoom you in, the more... <clears throat> I've got to scoot over. <laughs> Okay. All right, here we go, guys. And that's all there is to that. <clears throat> you know, I might put some wire loom on there or just black tape it up. Doesn't really matter. Um, you don't have to, but I like to tape them up at least right in there. But, um, yeah, so these wires, I can't remember what that orange and white one's for. I lost my instructions for that thing, so... <clears throat> Um, can't remember, like, these, yellow is battery all the time, red is accessory for when you turn the key on, it's got power and then ground is, is ground, and they will hook into these three wires. I try to get the wires all the same length or you know thereabouts I hope monkey's got extra sponges <laughs> but you know hey uh, man it, it just work goes so much easier and better when you have the right tools so thank you monkey she said just you just want to get a new one I'm like well you know mine works somewhat I said I think it just needs tips let's try to find tips they had no tips at the hardware store and we wasn't going to you know run all over the place and just find some tips so I said yeah let's just grab this it was like 25 bucks but yeah one Dennis has got pretty nice like if you need something really quick you can just grab it and you're done. You know, okay, he's a little bit longer. We'll go ahead and do these two. I think that one might be long enough. All right. All right, so. And then a couple of these are for the steering wheel controls. Key one and key two is your steering wheel control. There's illumination. Uh, that back, I'm not sure if that's reverse or if that goes to the emergency brake. And then your power antenna, we're not going to be using any power antenna, but I will be using the key one and key two, which is my steering wheel controls. So, all right, let's do our ground wire here. Oh, let's get, we have to get our heat shrink here. So what I do is I just cut them in half. But since these are power wires, I 
can't slide that up. Well, <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and cut them in half um, like I did the other ones. I like to use a whole tube if I can, but these won't slide up, and I like to keep the, you know, the labels on them for future references. <clears throat> Not that this stereo is ever going to, once this is installed, it's never going to come out because like even if we decide to sell the car, trade it in, I don't pull parts off of stuff like that. You know, like there was a couple things in her dad's pickup I could have used when we sold it. And she was like, well, just take it out. And I'm like, no, nope, it's in there. It's staying in there. Anything I put on the boat, it's staying in there. I don't strip a car down before I sell it. You know what I mean? And I did not. Wow. Okay. You ever get the feeling you're forgetting something? I'm trying to stay away from that thing. It's hot. It's 850 degrees. It seems to be holding steady. But my other one keeps like cooling off. And I think it has a lot to do with the tip. You sure you slide them back far, far enough back. But <clears throat> it is an old one. I think it's from the 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Probably late 70s, I think. But, all right. Now we'll get you up here. Let's do this again. And I just try to go until they're like, I straighten that back out. There we go. Like until they're about even to from the, uh, the the rubber to the rubber, you know, the insulation to the insulation, and just start twisting together. Like I said, usually I'll put them in inside each other so they kind of fit like this, and then twist them together like that. But I think these wires are just too small for that. But <clears throat> all right, let's get these done. And then I'm going to call it a night. Always do this in a wall ventilated area. I got a fan, exhaust fan over there, which does exhaust just fine. But if I turn that on, you guys won't hear me talking. Not that I'm saying anything really important here, but... Uh, Sometimes you gotta kind of go over it a little bit. If you get a little too much solder on it. That's why a lot of guys like to use the bigger heat shrink, but I like to go as, you know, as close as I can to the diameter of the wire. I may have to unsolder this and do this again because there's a big blob of solder there. So, so far this is the only one that's given me any trouble. That's not bad. Out of this is what, the ninth wire, so. There we go. Now we're in there. Then I feel, if I can't see some, sometimes you can see where the insulation is and where the wire is. But then I always feel and check and make sure I got it coverage, real good coverage on it. And this stuff don't take much, I know. One day at work, I was uh, 
doing some wiring on a trailer and I had to use this heat shrink and it just got it was working fine for a while but I went in had lunch and come out and after lunch man none of my heat shrink fit I was like what the hell's going on duh I'm in Florida I left it sitting out in the damn sun and it started shrinking up so it was good for small wires but then I had to send Zach or GM out to get me some more I gave him the box and sit whoops and sit here I need some of this I said what happened to it I said it's heat shrink he said what's that do because he, he didn't know much about that stuff I said well when you get hot it shrinks up so you put it on a wire and once you get the wire together you slide it over you heat it up and it shrinks around it so you don't have to use electrical tape he's like oh that's cool he says, what's wrong with this stuff? I said, nothing. It's too small for my wires. I left it sitting in the sun. <laughs> he goes, I thought you was better than that. <laughs> He's a funny guy. I love, I love working there. I did, man. Just, you know, health issues. Come on, get up here. Just can't do that stuff anymore. So, had to retire from all of it. And, you know, it's a, it's a liability working around that stuff, heavy equipment, and all that stuff, you know. And something happened, you know. I had to hurt myself, but more importantly, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to hurt others, so... And now we're going to do our accessory wire. Perfect. Wow, that's so much nicer. Thanks again, Monk. I appreciate it. Just get you another one for right now. Because I want to get a soldering station, but they're very expensive. I can't afford one right now. That was funny. Customer's always right. Well, that's 90% true. The other 10%, you just can't tell somebody something. They're right and you're wrong, and that's all there is to it. So, story time. Quick story time. Had a guy come in... <clears throat> Trailer brakes wasn't working on his boat trailer. I said, well, it's probably the master cylinder. You know, I didn't see any leaks. And he said, well, ain't no master cylinder on there. He says, it's, this is, those are electric brakes. I said, excuse me? He said, a friend of mine told me those are electric brakes. There's no master cylinder on here. So I think you're trying to screw me over. I said, you know what? Get your trailer and get it out of here. Now, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Maybe you should explain this to me. I said, let me explain it to you in an easy way. Get your trailer and get it the hell out of my shop. You know, you take it to your friend. He knows so much about it. Why, why didn't you take it to him and have him do it? Well, he's busy, blah, blah, give me a bunch of excuses. Get your trailer and get out of here. He said, well, where's your boss? I said, he might be in there. I said, you go talk to Eddie. Talk to Eddie, he's a little short guy. You go talk to him and you tell him what's going on. He said, well, I'm just going to do that. He was in there about five minutes and he came out and he said, sir, look, I'm really sorry. I said, I told you to get your trailer out of here. And he said, well, that's what your boss told me. He said, well, I'd like to speak to the owner. I said, you just did. He's the owner. He said, oh, oh, well, okay. All you had to do was try to explain it to me. I said, sir, I tried to explain it to you. It's a boat trailer. It goes in water, you know. You don't have electric brakes. You can't have electric brakes when it's submerging in water. Oh, well, that's all you had to say. See, you didn't give me a chance. You just kept telling me how your friend knows this, and he's went to school and done all this other stuff. He knows. Well, if he went to school, then he should know that you don't put electric brake system down in water. I said, you go have him do it. About two weeks later, he come back. He really apologized and, you know, I really need this done. And You know, all, what you really need to do is shut up and let somebody explain something to you instead of what your friend told you, you know. 
and I get I got that so much with my own shop. Well, my friend said that the battery's bad, and that's all it needs is a battery. Fine, I'll sell you battery. I'll put your battery in here. But I said, look, look at the tester. It's not wrong. The battery's testing fine. It's the alternator. Nope, nope. It's a battery. Put a battery in it. Put a battery in it. He come back next day. Still won't start. Battery's going dead. That's a, that's a crappy battery. I said, no, I told you it wasn't a battery. It's the alternator. You wanted to argue because your friend said it was the battery. It was battery terminals. I did all that, which they were fine. And they were. The battery was fine. His battery tested fine. His battery terminals were nice and clean. Well, they needed cleaned a little bit, but they wasn't. You know, they were fine. I said, I told you you need an alternator. Well, how much is that going to cost me? I told him, well, I'm, I'm just going to take it somewhere else. He come back the next day. Wanted me to put an alternator on I said, well, what'd they quote you? Almost double what you did. And I said, well, that's my price now because I got to deal with your stupidity, you know? Now, you can take it to your friend and let him do it for free. And then when you bring it back, it's going to be triple the cost because I'm going to have to fix his mess ups, you know? So however you want to do it. All right, just go ahead and do it. And it's just so many, you know, my friend said this or, you know, my neighbor told me that it's this and... Well, then take it to your friend, take it to your neighbor, take it to your, your son or your dad, whoever told you that, take it, then why aren't they fixing it? Well, they don't have the tools. Well, if they're so knowledgeable on this stuff, you would think they would have a set of tools, you, you know, to drill a couple holes and put you some lights on a trailer, you know, or whatever the case may be. You know, it was like, well, I had this guy in here, his light was all corroded inside. I said, look, man, I said, you know, we charge $70 an hour. It's going to take me an hour to try to clean that out. And then it's probably still not going to work. I said, we have a kit. I don't want to buy your kit right there. You're trying to upsell me. I said, no, sir. I said, I'm not trying to upsell you. I'm telling you, the kit is 40 bucks, okay? And I'll charge you a minimum of $35 of putting it in. You know, well, that's the price of an hour of, yeah, but you still want to have crap. This comes with all new wiring and everything for the same price as what it's going to cost me, cost you to have me fix this one. That's not going to last six months, you know? Just fix it. So I did. I did. I fixed it. Ended up costing $127. Guess what? Almost to the day, six months later, he come back complaining. That light broke. That light's not working anymore. And I wrote it down. I wrote it down on work order. You know, customer, customer refused to buy new, wanted it repaired against tax advice. And uh, Brittany, that was the owner's daughter, she brought it up. I walked in there with him. I said, hey, Brittany, can you bring this up? And I told her what it was for. He gave him her name and everything. She brought it right up and said, uh, so what seems to be the problem, sir? Because she had the ticket in her hand fixed my light six months ago and it just it quit working again hmm she's reading it yeah you're right he did fix it six months ago and she goes hey Marty why did his light quit working I said because he wanted me to repair his old one instead of putting a new light kit with new wires and everything in it which would have been you know around half the price altogether and he said no that's not true he told me he wanted to fix that, that he could fix it cheaper. And she said, what's that say right there, sir? And held it up to him. He grabbed it and looked at it and threw the paper down and said, all right, give me the light, the the harness kit, and go ahead and put it on. I said, first of all, I can't get to it today. I'm swamped, you know. It's 3.30 in the afternoon. We close at 5. I'm, I'm not dropping everything to take care of you. Yeah, but I, I'm a previous customer. I don't care. You went against what I told you, okay? I said, now... If you can bring it back in tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll get on it. If you're here at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll be right on it. It's going to take me 30 minutes, and you can be out of here. Well, that's not good enough. That's totally unacceptable. I said, get your crap and get it. I didn't say it. I said, get your shit and get it out of my shop. Now, get it out of here. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, no, no, get it out of here. Take it to whoever you said that can fix that light. Take it to them. And he tried to bring it back the very next week. And he went through Johnny. And I came in. I just happened to see him there. I said, Johnny, what are you doing? I'm writing up this work order for you. I said, don't write him up. I done kicked him out of here last week. 
And I explained to him, and he was like, look, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was wrong. You guys were right. I'm sorry. Johnny said, I ain't going to cut it. He says, you know, if shop manager here says he don't want it any shop, you're going to have to take it somewhere else. Well, I'll call the owner. Johnny said, here, I'll do it for you. He got got him on, got Eddie on speakerphone. And uh, I said, Eddie, that's Marty. <laughs> he said, what's going on, Marty? Because I never called him. I said, remember that guy came in last week? Oh, yeah, when did you fix that light? He's back, huh? I said, yeah, he's standing right here. You're on speakerphone. He said, get your shit and get it out of, get it out of my tech shop. Get it out of the manager's shop. <laughs> well, I, I never dealt with assholes like you before. Whatever, you know, take it somewhere else. I'm done. You know, when you, especially safety issues, somebody brings something in, want me to patch something, you know, can you patch this frame? No, I cannot patch that frame. It's going to need a whole frame rail. Well, I just want it patched. Well, you're going to have to take it somewhere else because I'm not going to have you get down the road, kill yourself, kill innocent people, kill an innocent kid because you wanted to save $200. I'm not going to do that. So anyway, not really a rant, just kind of a story time. All right, so that's that. The other wires I'm going to have to hook up once I get up in, once I get everything up in there. Um, like the steering wheel control wires, I'll do that once it's up in there. And once I get this, it should be programmed because um, I I had this up in there before and it worked fine. So so it should already be pretty much programmed to that truck because it was in that truck once. Uh, like like this is a steering wheel control. These things don't hardly ever work. Well, first of all, there's not a place in the back of my stereo that plugs this in. It's supposed to be your steering wheel controller. You plug it in and you're done. No, these never work. So what I'm gonna have to do is hook this one up here, this blue one with the yellow, and I think I can just do the uh, key one and key two, wire them into that, and that, that should do the steering wheel controls, which I don't even know why I'm worried about it because Monkey don't use them. She says, I keep forgetting they're there. I don't use them. Worst comes to worst, it's no big deal because she don't use them, but I like to have things working that's supposed to work. So, all right, guys. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give this a two thumbs up so far. Longevity, I don't know. Next time I plug it in, maybe it won't even get hot. I don't know. But right now, it does get a two thumbs up. It's 25 bucks plus tax. So, less than $30, you know, you can get you a decent little thing. Um, don't forget to check out Dennis Hallbacker channel. And, um,. Uh, monkey 1000 so guys i appreciate you watching thank you so much like i said i'm not going to bring you along with me on the install of that because i'm not even sure exactly how i'm going to do it yet i might find a place to hook a couple springs up and pull it up the springs up and then i've done that before some nice tight springs and hook on to the back you know like your your brackets hook on there and then it'll pull it in holds it nice and tight but uh, yeah, see, this is the chime. This is the main reason why this box, I have this box, is for the chime, you know, for the backup. Uh, it's, even though it's gonna have a camera, I still want the backup sensors working, you know, that beeps when you get close to something. But the camera will be nice, you know, backing up to the boat, uh, backing up to our new tent, that's gonna be nice. That was real nice, I just got stabbed with a piece of this copper wire. All right, so I'm gonna clean up a mess here. And again, thanks, Monk. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Hopefully your weekend is going well. Hope you have a great night and a great day tomorrow. We'll see you guys in the next one. Shea Bear, the Myth Man Legend. I'm gone for now. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys, and take care.